What's going on, everybody? Henry Washington here, back again to share with you some strategies that you can use to invest in today's inflationary, recessionary, crazy real estate market. It's always a good time to invest. It's just a matter of how you do it. So if you're looking for ways that you can still generate cash flow, passive income, equity, whatever it is that you desire, even in today's market, stick with us right here because we're going to show you exactly how to do that today using the ADU strategy. As always, make sure you please like and subscribe to this channel so that you can keep getting amazing content like this. You can keep getting ideas on how you can invest right now. What is an ADU? Well, an ADU simply stands for an additional dwelling unit. So that means you have a property that has one residence, but it also has an additional dwelling unit or a second residence on the property. Sometimes it can even be a third residence. And so the way to think about these and the way to look for these is you want to look for single family homes that have some of this key wording in the descriptions like ADU or mother-in-law suite is oftentimes used or granny flat, grandma suite. You can look for things like basement apartment or garage apartment. Or when you're looking through the pictures, what you're looking for is a space that has maybe an additional kitchenette in it or something that's uh, different from the main kitchen in the house. That's an indicator that that unit or uh, that that part of the house could be already either an ADU or could be easily converted into an ADU. The reason that this strategy is valuable in the market that we're in right now is because multifamilies are hard to find. If you just want to find a duplex, it's hard to find one where the numbers make sense if you just buy it openly on the market it's not quite gonna cash flow there is still a housing shortage in the United States as times change and you're looking for a strategy to start to build some wealth if you can't find a deal you may have to go make a deal right and you can make a deal by using this ADU strategy. Hey Henry, what are the different kinds of ADUs? How many different types are there? Which ones are the best ones to use? How do I even research to know if this is something I can do? Well, guess what? I brought in an ADU expert to answer just those questions for you because who else to teach you more about ADUs and how to best leverage them than that ADU guy himself, Mr. Derek. So Derek, take it away. Thanks, Henry. Derek, that ADU guy here. And I'm going to share with you guys all the types of ADUs you should be considering as we head into this new, potentially recessionary market cycle. This is my favorite strategy right here. Buy a primary residence with 5% down that already has a legal existing ADU. And to make this property even better, it has a detached garage with alley access that we're currently converting. With this strategy, you can show up to the closing table with 5% down and get 30 year fixed rate financing. So behind me is an example of a wonderful strategy. It's probably the most underrated and under utilized ADU strategy out there. It's the internal carve out ADU. And that's where we take a large house, we section off a portion of that house and we legally convert it into an independent living space. This is a great strategy for somebody who's not quite comfortable with the traditional house hack roommate situation. In this option, we get a little bit more privacy. It's also the most affordable option if you have space within your existing house. As we continue our tour of different types of ADUs, I can't help but talk about the famous garage conversion ADU. This type of accessory dwelling unit probably generates more calls and more questions than any other ADU strategy. Ideally, it'll be detached. It's really nice if the garage has alley access, but most importantly, as we enter into a potential recessionary cycle, a lot of homeowners and new investors already have a garage. So if you can find other space to put your storage in and convert that garage into much needed living space, it's gonna be a win-win for both tenants and investors alike. Another strategy to consider is the ADU above garage. And this is a good option if you're having trouble meeting the parking requirements because you can have the ADU and the parking all within one footprint. And last but not least is my favorite type of ADU, the detached standalone new build. And although this type of ADU is gonna take more experience and more money, it's also gonna be the most desirable and command the highest rents. People ask me all the time, where do I start my ADU research? 
So I wanted to take a minute to share with you a few strategies I've used over the years to find success. I would say first and foremost is building relationships. So as Henry would say, this is a people business. I recommend that you build a relationship with your local planning and zoning office. And I personally do that by calling, emailing, and physically showing up at the office and asking questions about ADU development, about code changes, about how the city council may view this infill housing option. Sometimes I'll bring in a zoning map and I'll ask the planner to please just circle areas on the zoning map where an ADU is an allowable use. If you're looking to convert a property that you already have or build an ADU in the backyard, you might be more limited, but those relationships are just as important. These are the folks that are gonna be approving your project or denying your project, so it's really important that we get to know them. Another great option is to find somebody in your area. If you have ADUs as allowable uses in a zone you live in, I promise you there's at least one semi-expert in the process. Find that person, I'm sure they would love to share everything they've learned. Offer to take them out to coffee, try to add value to them, but find somebody that's done what you want to do and ask them how they did it. That's probably the number two piece of research I would give you. The third option is to find a local coalition. So these are popping up all over states across the country right now. If there's not one in your local jurisdiction, there's probably one close, but look for a coalition that advocates for ADU development and call them and ask them questions. There's also obviously a ton of great information on bigger pockets. And if you have several hundred hours to go down a rabbit hole, just go ahead and Google ADU. There's tons of great information out there. You just have to make the time to consume it. It's only fair to include a couple of common ADU objections. And I'm gonna break those into two categories. The first is regulatory and the second is emotional. So on the regulatory side, it's simply the rules. Some jurisdictions will allow ADUs. Some jurisdictions will say, no way, you can't build those, you can't convert those in our city. And then there's this huge realm in between. And what I like to tell people is become an expert in your local zoning code. And all that really means is just know the rules. A few things I've seen people get hung up on over the years and they're known as poison pills in the ADU industry are parking standards. So you may have a jurisdiction that says, yeah, an ADU is an allowable use, you can do it, but you have to meet these really stringent parking standards that a lot of people can't meet. Another one is a residency requirement. So some jurisdictions will say, yes, you can do that, but it has to be your primary residence. HOAs are another area that I see people fighting often. I've known a lot of investors that simply are not buying any property in an HOA area. So those are a few things to consider. On the emotional side, it's more of a personal, emotional based limitation. Some people don't want more neighbors. So I see a lot of fights, people looking over fences and saying, not in my backyard, even though it's in somebody else's backyard. So just be ready to have to address your neighbors if you're looking at this strategy, I have talked to a lot of spouses over the years that didn't want somebody close to them on their own property. So it may be hard to convince your significant other that you're building a new secondary house in the backyard. And I always just ask people, what's the side setback in your zone? Because you probably already have a neighbor that's 10 feet away. Why not have one 30 feet away in the backyard that you have control over? And then the last point I would say is a common objection is people say, why would I deploy this set amount of cash for this ADU when I could just go to another area and buy a whole nother house? And that might line up better with your goals, but I would just ask you to maybe consider, is it gonna be brand new? like the ADU is? Is it gonna need little to no cap X for the next 20 years? Is it gonna demand an awesome tenant? So those are some things to consider if you're going to buy another property in lieu of building your ADU. All right, now you know all about ADUs and how to go research them and you're all ready to go. Let's talk about how you can find some properties right now that may be ready and ripe for you to do this ADU strategy. So when you're looking for properties and you're browsing through pictures, here's some of the things I want you to look for. One of my favorite things to look for when looking for a house that works as an ADU is look for houses where the square footage is bigger than the bedroom or bathroom count allows, right? If you're looking at a three bedroom, two bath house and that house happens to have 2000 square feet or more, 
that's typically pretty big for a traditional three bed, two bath. So that means that there's extra space in that house. And if it's a split wing, that's even better, meaning the master bed is on one side of the house and then the other bedrooms are on the other side of the house. Other things to look for are properties that have potentially a big yacht, a big lot. And so if you have a single family house and that single family house is on a big lot and it's maybe positioned all the way over to the left or the to the right of the lot or maybe just in the front of the lot. And so you've got lots of room on either side or the back of the house where you can build an additional unit and it won't be encroaching on the main house. Those are great things to look for. You would just need to make sure that the zoning will allow for you to build an additional unit in that backyard. When you're looking at houses potentially to do a garage conversion, what you you want to look for are houses in neighborhoods where other garages have been converted to living spaces. Now, they, those, those garages don't have to be have converted to ADUs, but maybe they're just an additional bedroom. That'll let you know that people are being permitted in that neighborhood to go ahead and convert garages to living space. You also want to look for if it has a detached shop or a detached garage. That means uh, that it already has a slab, right? There's a footprint and you may be, may be able to take that shop or take that detached garage and turn it into a detached unit. If that detached garage already has plumbing and electrical, that's a huge bonus because that's a big expense that you're going to have to do as you're looking to convert a detached space. So if you can get that already done for you by that exterior space, exterior garage having plumbing and electrical, that's a big bonus. Entry. So you want to make sure that your ADU will have a place where someone can enter that property without having to walk through through your living space or bother the other side of the, the, the unit. So be thinking about that from a logistical standpoint as you're reviewing these properties. If you think back at some of the houses you've looked at over the past year or so, I bet there's some that would have been perfectly ripe for this ADU strategy. All right, folks, so now you should be equipped with enough information to go out there and start looking for properties where this ADU strategy might make sense. You now know what an ADU is. You know the different types of ADUs that you can do. You also know how to go ahead and start researching if this even possible in your market and you know how to go and start looking for deals currently on the market that would make sense as an ADU. So take these tools, go out there, start investing, start building wealth. If this was super helpful for you, we would appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to this channel so we can keep showing you great content, great investing tips and tricks to help you. And as always, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm at the Henry Washington on Instagram. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you at the closing table.